In this devlog, I'm going to talk about some of the really interesting challenges that I didn't have time to dive into before and show how I solve them. I've talked about the different projections of non-Euclidean space before, but which one do I actually use for rendering? After all, if the camera is at the center, then all projections should look the same since they're azimuthal. In other words, it shouldn't make a difference if you have a large object farther away, or a small one nearby. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But for very complicated reasons, there actually is a difference, and it has to do with how computer graphics work. You see, when I want to draw a triangle, first the vertex shader needs to apply the non-Euclidean transformation and projection to the vertices. No problem so far, but then the fragment shader has to interpolate those vertices linearly to fill in the rest of the fragment properties, including the depth of the fragment. That's a big problem, because the vertex transformations are usually non-linear, so you can end up with the wrong depth on the fragment. And when the depth is wrong, you start getting weird glitches where a background object can draw on top of a foreground one, and it leaves really weird and ugly artifacts. I could subdivide the mesh a lot to make it less noticeable, but that won't make it go away completely. Luckily, of all the azimuthal projections, there is one, and only one, that maintains linearity between vertices, and that's the beltrami klein projection. So that's the one I use when I have to render hyperbolic geometry. For spherical geometry, the equivalent projection is the mnemonic projection, which projects from the center of the sphere to the plane. But that presents a new problem. It only accounts for half, or one hemisphere, of the geometry. Okay, so I could do two rendering passes, first the near hemisphere, then the far one, but there's still more problems. First of all, the far hemisphere needs a reverse depth buffer, which is a little complicated to pull off, but even worse, what happens when some of the triangle vertices are in opposite hemispheres? Don't forget, the equator between these hemispheres is at infinity in this projection. So trying to interpolate the discontinuity doesn't work, and the triangle has to be discarded. The stereographic projection, on the other hand, maps the entire space in a single pass. But it has those depth issues I mentioned before, and it gets worse the farther away it is from the camera but at least it looks almost perfect in the near hemisphere, and there's no discontinuity anymore. So I came up with a compromise solution. Render two passes of stereographic projection, once for the near hemisphere and once for the far. That way things very close and very far will look almost perfect, triangles on the equator will be continuous, and any remaining mistakes are virtually unnoticeable. I still have to deal with that reverse depth buffer though. I just remapped the normal 0 to 1 depth range to 0 to 1 half for the near hemisphere and 1 half to 1 for the far, and that was enough to get it working. So theoretically, I don't have to do any subdivision, but Hyperbolica also has a minimap, and that needs to work with different projections to make it easier to read. So I still ended up needing more subdivision in the end, if only for that. Lastly, I want to talk about some physics. There's a big problem with hyperbolic holonomy, especially in VR, which is that just moving the camera around in 3D can start drifting your rotation until you're tilted or all the way upside down. Also, gravity and especially level design become more complicated when considering the vertical dimension. So I decided to try to simplify. I'm using H3 or three hyperbolic dimensions for the rendering, but I made the physics operate on H2 cross E, or two hyperbolic dimensions and a Euclidean height. This very naturally solves the problem of vertical holonomy and gravity, and I can make the tiles look nice even if they're really tall. But of course this comes with a weird compromise. Since there's more hyperbolic space as you increase your elevation, 
you end up moving faster the higher up you go. But at the same time, higher up objects and platforms appear larger. So you don't really notice it too much other than the increase in curvature. I may still end up changing these physics eventually, so we'll see. So those were some of the harder problems I had to solve for the game. The next devlog will be about the unique challenges of 3D modeling for non-Euclidean spaces and all that craziness that comes with it. So see you then.